from the campus of MIT, welcome to Evening Magazine. I'm Sarah Edwards. And I'm Barry Nolan. And tonight we're going to be taking an in-depth look at some of the most fascinating aspects of Sarah Edwards' social life. <laughs> Story only lasts a minute. <laughs> 30 Actually, seconds. April Fool's. Tonight we're on the campus of MIT where they have one of the best math departments in the world because we're going to be meeting a young man who wants to change the way math is taught. He has developed a system of his own whereby he can do calculations in his head faster than you can with an electronic calculator. Then in our second story, we're going to Bedford High School in Massachusetts to see what appears to be a, a growing trend of patriotism on school campuses across the country. We'll find out why young people are joining the ROTC. Also tonight, Linda Harris discovers a spa in the desert that will make you feel pampered like you've never been before. And Steve Avison has some fun ideas for you and your family to help celebrate this April Fool's weekend. All that coming right up on our April Fool's edition of Evening Magazine. Back in the early 70s, when the Vietnam War had divided this nation, the mere mention of the Reserve Officer Training Corps, or ROTC, could prompt ridicule and hostility on college campuses. Anti-military sentiment was at its peak. But now in the 80s, for whatever reason, the ROTC has made a comeback, not just on college campuses, but in high schools as well, involving even the most unlikely of candidates. 16-year-old Lucia Evitable seems like any typical high school girl who dreams of rock stars and the latest fads. But unlike most of her friends, Lucia marches to a different drum. Lucia is a member of the Junior Air Force ROTC at Bedford High. She's one of 180,000 young men and women joining the ranks of ROTC programs at high schools across the country. Present arms! Well, at first, when I came here in the ninth grade, I wanted, I didn't want to do it. I was really set against it. I didn't want to be in the military at all. And my mom said, well, why don't you give it a try, you know, and then if you can get out of it. And she started, you know, telling me how, you know, maybe it might be nice. And I started really looking at it and thinking, well, you know, why not try it, you know. March on, march. Five, four. Marching drills, rifle practice are a far cry from the more accepted teenage activities like football and cheerleading, and it's a distant cry from the Vietnam era of the 70s. When the anti-war movement was at its peak, student protesters burned down ROTC facilities on several college campuses. By 1975, dozens of universities eliminated officers' training altogether. So students just rebelled against the military. They picked the ROTC as uh, a target and was uh, a ready target for him. Lieutenant Colonel Ed Campbell, who served in Vietnam, now is in charge of the ROTC program at Bedford High School. To his students, the Vietnam era is a vague memory. To them, Vietnam is something they read in a history book. There's really, to them, is no hatred, no feeling uh, against the military because we were over there. So they, to them, it's just uh, a period of time that you know, we talk about. So I don't see it as a return to uh, patriotism. It's some, Patriotism, I think, they probably is instilled in them and, and home, and, and it's just coming maybe to the surface now. And not only is patriotism coming to the surface, but also women's growing involvement in the military. It doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman, only that you're good. From the Air Force to the Army, military recruiters emphasize adventure and career opportunities for young women like Lucia. I don't want just a regular nine to five job that's a grind, you know? So, you know, I want something exciting. I don't want to just do the same thing. I want, I want to do exciting things. About 30% of ROTC members across the country are women looking for an exciting career, and that also holds true at Bedford High School. Well, I think um, the ROTC has a lot to offer to, a, especially a girl nowadays, because if you're going into college, and you have good academic skills, you can, you can try and get a scholarship. My father was in the Air Force, and he liked it. He stayed in there 23 years, so I figured there's something he must like about it. 
Now, Russia is really big on strategic defensive forces. They have For both young men and women, ROTC is an elective course where they can learn about leadership, foreign policy, and aerospace. Those who attend are developing strong feelings about their country. Now, with, with all the things happening, Russia moving in Afghanistan and Poland and everything, that, you know, the kids are saying, hey, you know, let's get with it. We got to stick by our country. I think, uh, yeah, they, they're becoming more patriotic because they see, like, what happens in, let's say, Iran, and they want to they get involved in more military things and find out how we can prevent it. Fly out. But not everybody at Bedford High School shares this enthusiasm for the ROTC. I don't like uniforms. <laughs> so you'd never want to no, join? No. <laughs> no, it's like the kids that are in it, it's fine for them because it's just like, it's for them, but... <laughs> You have to be into that sort of thing. Yeah. I don't see the point of it. It's just trying to say, this is how you're now going to follow orders, and we're just trying to prepare them for mindlessly falling into a military system. Forward, march. I mean, it's nothing different. You're still the same person. I think they look down on it just because they don't understand what it is, why a lot of kids want to do it. Oh, look at this. You guys, look at this. Look. In a time when teenage peer group pressure can discourage individuals, Lucia is her own person. Like her friend, she looks forward to being a senior next year, going to football games and dances. But she has a special dream that stands apart. I decided I want to be a pilot. because What kind of pilot do you want to be? Well, yeah, that's, that's the problem. I want to be a fighter pilot but, or an attack plane. I'm an A-10, but I can't because I'm a girl. Maybe that'll change? Yeah, I hope that'll change. If that changes, that's great. Hort! Hort! For now, Lucia works in pursuit of that dream to fly, and the ROTC is a good starting point. She hopes to one day attend the Air Force Academy, and after that, who knows? The sky is the limit. Three, set, four! Here at MIT, there are close to 500 students in the ROTC, and they say that enrollment is steadily increasing across the country. So it could be a trend that's here to stay. We'll be back with more Evening Magazine in just a moment. Well, I love April Fool's Day because people are practical jokesters. It brings out the sense of humor in everybody. It's <laughs> what are you doing? Nothing, nothing. It was interesting to see the other side of people on April Fool's, like Steve Avison, yeah. who did that great uh, instant weekend where he jumps in the ocean in the winter. The boy, uh, <coughs> we're wondering about it. I'm glad he keeps that side under control. Yes. And if you thought that Barry and I are always sane and in control, we've got some outtakes to show you that may give you a different side of us. Tonight, Evening Magazine's Lisa Gibbon takes us... I'm sorry, I'm, I was too cold to talk. I did my very best. I'm gonna be a real hit this winter. Well, coming up next on Evening Magazine, we go out to the West Coast, where else? To see life as a cartoon. Oh, please, one more. Hi, I'm Barry Nolan. And I'm Sarah Edwards. Evening Magazine won't be here tonight. Instead, we bring you great live basketball action. Well, I love April Fool's Day. People playing practical jokes and... Are you there? <laughs> what are you doing? Nothing. <laughs> Hi, I'm Barry Nolan. No. All right. Hi, I'm Marty Sender. Okay. okay. Hi, I'm Barry Nolan. And I'm Sarah Edwards. Evening Magazine won't be here. <laughs> Were you doing it right that time? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. I love April Fool's Day. It brings out the practical jokester. I can't talk anymore. <laughs> Hi, I'm Barry Nolan. And I'm Sarah Edwards. Evening Magazine. <laughs> I'm sorry, this guy's really not <laughs> easily distracted. <by> yeah. <laughs> I got it. I got it. This is it. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. okay. <laughs> Shoots our image right down, doesn't see, it? TV isn't always pretty. But I'd like to point something out. During this entire day when we have been shooting this particular show, I have been such a nice person. I mean, I am not a practical jokester, Barry. I am basically your straight person, your straight man. You play the jokes, you're the goon all the time. <laughs> oh, thanks. Okay. I'm your sweet Sarah. <laughs> okay. Well, me and sweet Sarah won't be here tomorrow night. Instead, we'll be bringing you live basketball action as the Celtics take on Atlanta down in Atlanta. But we'll be back Monday at our regular time, so I hope you'll join us. Have a good weekend. Good night, everybody. Don't have a man. Yeah. <laughs> See what I stole you?